In this video, I'm going to show you how to do mediation in Smart PLS3. It's really pretty straightforward. Let's say you have a model like this. Uh, let me zoom in here. I have self-efficacy, computer self-efficacy, predicting skill acquisition. As my efficacy increases, I expect my uh, ability to gain skills with technology to increase. However, I think that that effect is mediated by my innovativeness with technology. So as my efficacy increases, so too does my willingness to innovate. And it's because of my willingness to innovate that I gain skill. In fact, that's probably the primary reason or maybe the only reason that efficacy actually leads to skill acquisition. So what I can do is set up my model like this with these kinds of arrows and then go to calculate and we're going to do a bootstrap real quick, a consistent bootstrap. I can choose consistent because this is a fully reflective model. Um, here's a thousand subsamples and start calculation. Um, the consistent bootstrapping is for fully reflective models. It sort of um, mirrors covariance-based uh, SEM, whereas if I had formative factors in there, I'd want to use just the regular bootstrapping, not the consistent bootstrapping. Okay, so in the report, we want to go to indirect effects. And there's only one indirect effect in the model. Let me zoom in. And it's the effect of CSE on skill acquisition through innovativeness. So the answer is, uh, here's the effect, 0.285, indirect effect. Um, and that is a significant indirect effect, meaning I do have mediation. Now let's say I wanted to use the terms full or partial mediation. And I realize not all literature supports that. Um, some still call for it, some don't call for it, some actually discourage it. So, um, but here's what you do if you wanted to speak to that. What you would do is you'd go to the direct effects here, the path coefficients, and you'd see if the effect from the IV to the DV, in this case, efficacy to skill acquisition, was significant. In this case, the effect is 0 0.054, roughly, um, and that p-value is non-significant. However, the indirect, the two uh, other effects are significant, and we know the indirect effect is significant. We just looked at that. And so the answer is we have full mediation because the direct effect from the IV to the DV is not significant, but the indirect effect is. Now, if this were significant, we would have partial mediation because uh, the direct effect from IV to DV is significant and the indirect effect from IV to DV is uh, significant. Now, what if the indirect effect was not significant? Well, then we'd have no mediation, um, and so we wouldn't even have to talk about it. Just say we don't have mediation. And that's it. Fairly straightforward. Um, if you do have a more complex model than this, for example, if you have multiple, de uh, excuse me, multiple mediators, uh, in fact, let me just throw one in here, uh, right there, and I'll just make it uh, anxiety. Why not? Throw anxiety in here. And let's say that um, efficacy also goes through anxiety. And name it for the sake of prudence here, uh, anxiety. What happens in PLS as I run this is it doesn't take into account these separate indirect paths. So when it calculates the indirect effect, it calculates the net indirect effect. The indirect effect through all the indirect effect through all mediators. So as you can see here, um, here are all those paths. Um, first off, we realize that anxiety uh, to skill acquisition, there is no effect. So there won't be any mediate. Oh, there's no effect here. Here's the p-value. Uh, so there's not going to be any mediation um, through that particular uh, route. But if you look at the indirect effects, uh, Smart PLS does not distinguish between the indirect effect through um, innovativeness and the indirect effect through anxiety. Notice there is still only one indirect effect. It is significant because the path through um, innovativeness was significant and strong, uh, sort of to outweigh the non-significant path through anxiety. However, again, with complex models like this, 
Smart PLS does not distinguish between those two separate indirect routes. Um, it pools them together. If you want to assess these separately, you would have to either do the math yourself, and I don't have a tutorial for that, um, but essentially you just multiply the indirect effects, um, or the two paths, you multiply this path by this path um, to get the effect, but then you still have to calculate the p-value, which I don't have a, a formula for. Um, or you could run a Sobel test if your data is normal, uh, not non-normal. So a Sobel test, for example, if I go to uh, the internet and go to uh, Daniel Sober, uh, what's it called? Sobel test. He has a free Sobel test calculator. It's a test for mediation. Some people don't like the Sobel test. It has some biases and isn't any good when you have non-normal data, but um, it could work when you do have normal data. So I could do it here. I could test just this path here, for example. 